We are in Kojado to see the largest botanical garden in Korea, the Jungle Dome. This massive half-submerged egg-shaped dome made of triangle glass is as much a nature theme park as much as it is a botanical garden. I'm going to tell you all you have to know about this place, including some things that the ordinary non-architectural person may miss. So I hope you all enjoy the video and have a bon voyage. Hey, power. The Jungle Dome is located in Kojedo, which is at the southmost edge of Korea where the mountains, seas and islands dance with each other. Really, the natural environment of this place is breathtaking. <sighs> this video includes the basic information, the key spaces, followed by little things that I thought would be nice for all of you who are planning to come here. To get here, generally you will start from Busan, which is like the southern second capital city of Korea, and from there you will need to either take a one hour half drive by car or take a two and a half hour bus trip that includes one transfer. So it's not the most accessible place but once you get there you'll soon realize that Kojido is one of the best places for dates and tours in Korea. Ask any Korean if Kojido is any good and 100% they will reply with a positive answer. Especially since Jeju-do, the number one national and international tourist destination is crammed full of people at the moment and probably will be to the end of time. So if you're looking for a more peaceful option, I definitely recommend considering Kojido. This place has a 5001 entry fee and it closes at 5! 5! 5! 5pm! So make sure you have enough time to go around the place. Two hours should be enough, but not enough if you're willing to wait in line for the one stupidly popular photo zone that I will show you soon. The Jungle Dome opened at the end of 2019, which surprise surprise was exactly when the coronavirus started spreading like crazy in Korea. So basically, the opening ceremony wasn't very different from a closing ceremony. Ah, oh, that is unfortunate. Anyway, it opened again earlier this year, and oh my god, it is a landmark. The Jungle Dome is a 4,500 square meter dome that is 30 meters high, made up of 7,500 triangular glass panels. This space is so huge that it is divided into these differentiated themed areas. There are over 1,000 plants with 300 different species, out of which there are some very very unique ones that you'll identify easily from their what the weird ass coronified translated names. Like the monkey no climb tree. <laughs> what the? There is actually a tree named monkey no clown. Whoa. The key spaces of the jungle dome include the aquatic ecological garden at the entry point. Inside, there is also the stone garden and the stone valley, which is a magnificent and immersive area, including an awesome artificial waterfall that creates a mystical environment by emitting ambient sound and mist. If you are an Instagram person who needs to take photos at the most iconic landmark spots, you need to go to the bird's nest. However, we went there on a Monday afternoon and the bloody queue was 30 minutes and although I do admit the scene is amazing, I skipped it. Sorry. Anyhow, I reckon the queue for this one photo zone will easily exceed one hour during the weekends so be prepared in terms of your schedule for the day. And remember, it closes at 5pm! If you happen to find that you don't have enough time for the bird's nest, there is also another photo zone that has almost the same kind of atmosphere but almost no waiting queue. I'm talking about the jungle observatory where you can get a great wide open shot of the place. It felt amazing to see the whole landscape of the place captured with in one architectural dome. There is also the cave of light that surprisingly astonishes you with a media tunnel. The way they left the net exposed is let down but in any case from an architectural perspective I think that the way the walking course provides a diverse range of enclosure levels from tight and enclosed cave like spaces to wide open spaces creates contrast for more impactful and dynamic experience. So those were the key spaces for me. There are many more zones for you to discover on your trip so come see them when you you can. Now as an architect I saw four things that got me thinking and also thought that was worth sharing with you to make your trip a little more informed and a little more fun. Number one is a tennis ball. <laughs> yes there are tennis balls located around the edges of this dome. These things are skewered on these protruding sticks along the exterior wall 
And funnily enough, the fact is that these tennis balls are a safety measure to prevent people from being poked or scraped by the rough metal stick ends. You see, these windows are all operated automatically because they have to control the temperature and the humidity levels of the sensitive environment. And these windows are open by pushing these sticks towards the outside, which means when the window is closed, the sticks are pushed inside, leaving a blunt end that is a potential hazard. It's a shame they didn't have a specialized window design for this, but nonetheless, covering the metal stick ends with a tennis ball should, should do the job. Number two, this is a small detail that makes a huge difference to the way we feel the space. What I love about this point is that it is so subtle that a lot of people would have missed it. So what am I talking about? When you're walking around at ground level, look out for any structural columns, like under the bridge because damn they have used parts of a tree to cover up the structural column and by doing so they have created an environment where our nature journey experience is as natural and green as possible and not interrupted by these man-made metal structural columns hmm it's a good one number three <laughs> I mean number three, the zigzagging stairs that you can see along the roof. I, I don't know if some people find it cool, but most likely you will see it as a disturbance to the whole pure triangular sky concept. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, it would be awesome to view the whole jungle dome from there. And yes, it would be awesome as a skywalking track. But no, I'm afraid. <sighs> It's only for the maintenance of the building. You see, the lower parts of the dome can be maintained and cleaned by ladders, mops, and mobile elevators, but the highest areas are given these separate platforms to work on for cleaning and maintenance. And last but not least, we're going to have a close look at the triangles that make up the dome. Now, from far away, it looks awesome, but from close up, we can see that these joints are so huge, you can literally put a whole hand between them. Now, these black strips function to waterproof the building and make the building airtight so the interior environment can be fully controlled to keep all the plants healthy. That's good. But if you compare this to the Galleria department store in Kwangyo, designed by OMA that opened just one year later, we can see the available technology today allows us to slim these black lines by more than half, creating a much more sleek and fashionable aesthetic. So if you enjoy the geometric nature of this dome, make sure to subscribe to check out the department store which will be uploaded on Bon Voyage after a couple of videos. Well that was the Jungle Dome, I hope you had fun. Please hit the like button if you did. And if you're planning to go to Kojidal, make sure you don't miss the Nursery Cafe, which is about half an hour away from the Jungle Dome. Here you can really sense the full spectrum of nature Korea has to offer, as well as get your hands on these beautiful stone-shaped cakes. You can check it out by pressing here. Here. And please remember to subscribe if you want to see more great architectural spaces in Korea. For the next video, we are preparing something very special this time. The next video is not going to be about one building. Instead, it's going to be a conclusive review of all the department stores that have opened from 2020 to 2021. I'm thinking of preparing a video in Korean and another one in English, each focusing on different agendas. So stay tuned and I hope you have a bon voyage.